I started doing comedy in December, and I don't want to like brag, but I do sort of see myself as an innovator in the genre. And I thought I'd share with you this technique that I'm sort of workshopping right now to elevate the genre of stand-up. Rough draft, I'm calling it crowd work. <laughs> so it's two steps, I'll kind of walk you through it. The first step is you ask someone in the audience a question. Observe. So, um, what do you do for work? Okay, so, um, <laughs> sometimes you'll ask someone a question and just get like the worst vibes possible, and that's not your fault, okay? That's their fault. You just... <laughs> but you just carry on. The second step is to respond to the question. Watch this. You're a horticulturist? That's crazy. <laughs> and there you go, that's all there is to it. Feel free to try it, other comedians, um, but be sure to credit me. <laughs> what else about me? Um, I've been getting really into nihilism. I don't even know how to pronounce it. You know what? Doesn't even matter. <laughs> I also get yelled at a lot when I go to Costco. <laughs> I went up to get a sample, and the lady was like, where's your mom? <laughs> and I really didn't know where my mom was. So I was like, I don't know where my mom is. And she said, children under the age of 12 can't get a sample on their own. <laughs> that one really stuck with me, you know, just because with her qualifier, younger than 12, that means 12 wasn't even on the table for her. <laughs> started spiraling a little bit, started thinking any man who's ever been sexually attracted to me, could they be a pedophile? <laughs> a man told me he loved me for the first time, and I was like, that's actually really gross, maybe. <laughs> Break, but I did date a weatherman once. Um, it started off purely practical. I have the hardest time knowing the difference between a tornado watch and a tornado warning. If I can impart any practical knowledge, if it's a watch, it means you have time. That's not a joke. You're welcome. Just helpful. And oh my god, we were the cutest couple. He would do this thing where he would sort of smooch my shoulders like that. And, I would do this thing where, oh my god, it's I just lose it thinking about it. When he would leave the house, I would follow him. <laughs> it's really hard to surprise a weatherman though. I'd wake up in the morning and be like, Sven, wake up. <laughs> wake up, it's so nice outside. And he'd be like, yeah, I knew it would be. <laughs> Whatever. He did break up with me. And for what? Reading his mail? Sorry, I want to know what's going on in your life. If that's a crime, sue me. So... <laughs> it is a crime. <laughs> and he did. Um, so we're back on the scene. We're dating again. Um, I went on a date with someone who didn't own a dojo, but was on track to own a dojo in 10 to 15 years. <laughs> Real quick, if you laughed at that, you are a bully, by the way. I literally just told you someone's dream and you laughed, so you might want to sit with that. But do you want to guess how long it took him to ask me a single question? Do you want, do you want to guess? Six months? That's crazy. <laughs> No, it took him 61 minutes to ask me a single question. A lot of people in here who have been on dates with men are probably like, that's all? But the kicker is he asked himself two questions in that time frame. I had asked him, what sort of books do you like to read? And he answered, blah, 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 whatever. And in the, wasn't really paying attention. Uh, and in the downtime, when someone who maybe was more familiar with the arts, the music of conversation, someone would have been like, so what about you? He instead paused and was like, hmm, what other 
favorite books do I like to read? <laughs> and then he answered his own question. He did the same thing with movies. We did not go on a second date. <laughs> That's all I have. Thank you so much, everyone.